I'm just here for like two minutes. Hallelujah. You are most welcome to this public lecture. And I will request those that are still outside to join in. Uh, we will begin with the unveiling. That's why you've seen the team that was here moving behind. So very soon, the whole team will be here. I will request uh, those who are seated to come in front so that whoever will be coming in pass behind. Kindly come in front. Leave the behind seat for those people who will be coming in later. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much, worship team. I welcome you, staff, Bishop Stewart University. I welcome you, our dear students. I welcome you, praise and worship team. May the Lord God continue to bless you. I welcome our visitors that are already with us. Continue with praise and worship. And very, very soon, our guests will be coming in. Thank you.
management, senior management team, our dear staff, our beloved students, the media, ladies and gentlemen, you are most welcome. You're welcome for this very Professor Rukari public lecture. I will request the choir to lead us in anthem. Choir, please. Uganda may go to Poldy, we lay a future in thy hands. United free for liberty together. Let us pray. Our dear loving Lord, we want to give you thanks for this day. And especially as we honor and recall and remember and associate with the late Professor Enoch Rukari, the first Vice Chancellor of this great university. We pray that you bless us for the time that we shall be here at the public lecture. But also we give thanks to you for the different notable personalities that have been invited, who have had great significant contribution towards the well-being and the far that this university has gone, including the family of Archbishop Let Nkoyoyo and 
many others that have made significant contribution. We pray that you bless our time here, and especially as we listen to great wisdom from different other personalities, and as we learn big lessons about the importance of making a contribution to society. We are mindful of Proverbs 22, verse 1. A good name is worth more than precious jewels. We thank you for the great good names that we have around here that have made a great contribution to Bishop Stewart University. May you bless us and guide us for the time that we shall be here. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you through Christ our Lord, we pray. Very much, my Lord Bishop. Allow me to request the Vice Chancellor, Professor Maud Kamatenis Mujisha, to give us her welcome remarks, insights on why the lecture is on, in the honor of the late Professor Enoka Rukari. Professor, please, you are most welcome. We continue to welcome you all, our dear students. Thank you very much for joining in. It is very, very important to appreciate people who have done a lot. It encourages us to know that yes, in future, maybe I'll be appreciated as well. Our distinguished guests, we welcome you. Thank you so much for coming. It is one thing to invite someone, and it is another to come. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Hello? <laughs> Test. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. And all the time, the Lord is good and that is nature. Wow, he deserves a very big hand clap. <laughs> clap for the Lord. Clap for the Lord. Our guest of honor, the family of Professor Enoch Lukare represented here by the mama, Mrs. Gwen Rukare, and the children, I'm requesting you to stand so that people can know what is going here today. Our mama, may you stand. Yes, clap for her, clap for her. The children, you will get you will get introductions later. We have the keynote speaker of today, Professor Ephraim Kamuntu. May you stand for recognition. These are the key people who have been behind BSU. We have the discussant, Professor Elisabeth the first chair council of Bishop Stuart University from 2003 to 2018, or 2018. Thank you very much, he's a discussant. Then we have our very own, the chancellor of this university. He is actually the host, if I may say, this is Board of Trustees function, none by none other than our own Right Reverend Dr. Fred Shadon Mwesigwa. May you stand for recognition. Thank you very much. And the moderator, who is also the owner, the governor of this university, the current governor from 2018 to date, Professor Kenneth Kagame. And I'm requesting the council members to stand. May you remain standing for us, your council members. Thank you very much. We have, these are the council members we have seen. 
The vice chairperson of council is Madam Karen Kabeho, the inspector of schools of all Uganda. Thank you very much. The rest have already introduced them. Then we have our very own, the top management. The people must see you before I go to the visitors. Top management and senior management of BSU. May you stand for recognition. These are deans, the heads, the directors. In the interest of time, I will not mention your names, but they are here. Distinguished leaders, you are most welcome. And I want to introduce our visitors. We have key people who are here. We have the mayor, the former mayor who made BSU. Actually, I'm told the road coming here is the one who made sure that it was in place. Mr. Tumine. We also have here, not the first PhD student. I'm sorry, the first first class student of BSU in 20, 2006. Mr. Noti. Clap for him, yes. He's your alumnus. And he's a retired police, what? Commissioner? Prisons commissioner. And we have other invited guests. Those who are going to sign the service recognition register, I'm requesting them to stand. We have our former but also, I would say the founding chancellor, then, because we are under UCU, right, uh, His Grace, the Archbishop Mpara Nkoyo, the late, the families represented here. May you stand for recognition of the two daughters. The mama was to come today, but she had a, she had a problem, she couldn't make it. These are key people. When you are here, you know where you came from. You came from Uganda Christian University. And the Archbishop was the Chancellor then. We are supposed to be having here Professor Noel, the first, the, actually the first and founding Chancellor, Vice Chancellor of Uganda Christian University. But he's not here. We have Professor Ntozi. The late represented by his wife. Thank you, and the family. Thank you very much. The first secretary, Mrs. Vitashavorachire. The first registrar. Thank you very much. We have key people. Professor Nganwa, where are you? We know we always name education broke the other uh, Professor Nganwa, Nganwa. This is the Nganwa family. Professor Nganwa is here representing the family as well. So, my speech is written for all our visitors in your various categories, staff of BSU, the student guild leadership, the current students, the media and everybody, ladies and gentlemen, praise God. Praise God. So you are all most welcome to Bishop Sot University. I'm not going to read the entire speech. It is given. And in the interest of time, I'll pass through. I have not recognized the key person from the University Council for East Africa. Where is he? Why did he sit? We have, you know, we belong to, to the East African community now. Common education area. We have networks as far as jobs are concerned. We belong to Inter University Council for East Africa. We are represented here by Professor Kosam, representing Executive Secretary. Clap for him. Yes, I was going to say it in my speech, but they have reminded me I should do it now. We have, because I have it. The, the, the second vice chancellor, Professor Vivangamba Jose, and your dear wife. The wife is seated on the other side for a reason. She's a staff. Jane remains standing. They need to see you. you are, she's a senior lecturer. So for her, she must be in her, in her area, but you are most welcome. So today, 
as we celebrate the 7th BSU Mission and Exhibition Week, in particular, this public lecture in honor of the late Professor Enoch Rukare, the first Vice Chancellor, 2002 to 2004. On a special note, we will welcome our invited guests, and in particular, our guest of honor, once again, the family of the late Professor Enoch Rukare, led by Mrs. Gweni Rukare, children and grandchildren. I want the grandchildren to stand up. I did not recognize them. Where are they? Please stand up. You are actually the one who are very critical. You did not see this, but now you know where your grandfather was. So clap for them, please. Thank you. We are honored to host you. This great honor of Professor Kare is the first of its kind as BSU celebrates 20 years of existence and exponential growth. Can't you clap for that? Exponential growth for BSU is not a joke. May the Lord Almighty bless you. To God be the glory. So this BSU theme for mission is separate yourselves from the people around you and from your foreign wives, from Ezra chapter 10, verse 11. And BSU is also celebrating the 20 years of existence, guided by the scripture from Ezra chapter 3, verse 8. The Levites who are 20 years old or older were put in charge of rebuilding the Lord's temple. The theme, therefore, of BSU at 20 is celebrating 20 years of generational transformation of the community through holistic education. This year, 2022, we are also standing on our core value number three, which is pursuit of knowledge and ingenuity. We are grateful to God for the far he has brought us, Ebenezer. Background of Bishop Stuart University week. When BSU, we got a charter on 25th of October, 2014, signed by His Excellency, the President of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. That day marked the beginning of Bishop Stuart University week, which we celebrate annually in commemoration of the great milestone in the history of Bishop Stuart University. Marked by the missions, exhibitions which you have seen, and more so in Joshua's generation, from Joshua chapter 1, verse 1 to 9, since May 2014, the priests were key in possessing the land, meaning that by the grace of God, we shall sing victory. Hallelujah and amen. So the missions have been on. The sixth BSU week, we had it on from 8th, 15th March 2020. And thereafter, we entered into COVID. So we did not celebrate 2021. We thank God for keeping us safe. But we condone with those who lost their loved ones due to COVID-19. And we thank God for sparing us. This seventh BSU Mission and Exhibition Week, we have had different speakers. Our chief missioner has been Professor, I mean, sorry, Bishop Emeritus Geoffrey Rgobsisi. We had Reverend Canon Murindabugui. We had Reverend Jasper Tumhimsi. And Mrs. Penny Nabiaruhanga, who is coming today, who is coming today in the evening. And so far, many students have accepted their Lord and Savior. <laughs> Yesterday we had over, over 36 students in the night with the Minister for 
Bishop Rob Sisi coming to the Lord. And on a sad note, I also want to let you know, we lost our student. Yesterday we had a few no service here. Today, why you don't see some of the students here, they have gone for burial, including our good president. But in our sermon, actually in our talk, we said the student has gone, but it is to show that BSU is moving from one level to another in transforming the spiritual lives of this land. And so we comforted the family. We said, go knowing that this place will not remain the same. In the previous night, there is a student who used to drink alcohol. He came here drunk and he said, I've accepted the Lord as my personal savior. Yes, and he gave a testimony yesterday. And in the night, very many students came to the Lord. So that is very important for BSU. Today, we are having a public lecture, as I've already said. I've already introduced the key people as a key milestone. The signing of service recognition register, the appendix is already given. Today, also, we are naming the third floor, or we have actually named it because it has been officially signed off, the third floor of Bishop Stuart University Library as a Professor Enoch Rukare Research Carols for his great contribution in starting a university from scratch in Unyankore Kodomutara. Thank you. And tomorrow, we shall have a closing exhibition. A visitor who has already confirmed, Honorable Minister Dr. Monica Msenero Masanza, the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovations, will be here tomorrow. And the fellowships will go on. On Sunday, we shall have Vice Chancellor's tournament. You are all invited. Key achievements of BSU. I'm not going to highlight them because the speakers are going to talk about them. Professor Eno Karukare was COA. Two, Bishop Swart University acquired the charter in 2014. Three, our student enrollment since 2000 to date grew from 200 to now over 5,000. The number, yes. The number of students who have graduated, this is, these are important things because we are an academic institution. Since 2006, first graduation, and I use it to date, we have over 18,764 18, graduates. And last graduation alone, we graduated 1,773 uh, students with two PhDs graduating from BSU. So we are growing stronger. We have now five faculties and 14 departments. The leaders are there. We have accredited programs. Now we started from 10. Now we are talking of 90 plus programs. Our metric rankings were in 20s and 30s. Now we are in 10s. We are now in 14. That is powerful. We have collaborations with Trinity Western University. The first center, we now have masters. You can study here when you are in Canada. And students, when they finish here, they can go to Canada. So that is a very important milestone for BSU. We have adopted online learning or, or DARE, and now we are able to pass through COVID. Reforum has given us money. Reforum, you are all, you are all aware about Reforum. Uh, we have MOUs with them. So far, 14 of our staffs, nine of which are doing PhDs and masters, they are studying. We have a gross studies internship in Israel. We will take our students. We have Avis Foundation uh, donations, they are on the farm. We have World Bank Essential Oil Extraction Unit, they are here in the exhibitions. We have an agribusiness. Uh, and ethnobotany chair of Professor Dr. Tumsime Mtebre, when we call you another time to come here, we celebrate, don't say what is it, that is here 
He is a PhD. He received the honors doctorate uh, of Rose Honors Causa of Bishop Stuart University. He is a hero academician for BSU, the former governor. We have uh, Expedia MOU with internship in Europe. Where now? Why is Nobat? Nobat Gabura, you are here. I'm expecting. Why is Nobat Gabura? We were together in the office yesterday. They are exhibiting, but he's here. You will see him. We are now taking our students, even including tourism. I have to give you good news that even tourism students who are now included. Uh, they, will be, they are going to Norway, Germany, and Denmark. We are, I've already told you, Reform. We have programs of UBTEB. We are now members of uh, Commonwealth Association, Association of Commonwealth Universities. We have purchased Faculty of Law and established it on its own campus, just across. And our, to show that we are doing very well, we now have lawyers who are advocates of the high court. We have one of the best law schools, including now we have an, uh, a master's LLM at BSU starting this academic year. Employability, this one I cannot name it. May I know it very well? Because you, you know our students, they are all over. We are now we are the leaders, we are actually the, the leaders now in this country and in this region. When you talk about local governments now, wherever you go, you find the BSU. The, the district education officers are now our students. The inspectors of schools, they are our students. It's on record. Yeah. We, we even have our nurses now, they are even in World Health Organization. So the university has really moved. In politics, the road mayor, even now where we are, the road mayor, Honorable Kachevez, is an alumnus of BSU. So what else? You have heard you not know, the first first class. He's here. A big person who was in, in, in police and uh, prisons. So infrastructure development, we have moved. I will not mention much, but faculty of education, ISSB broke down there was opened by Mama Janet Katam Seven. We also have Faculty of Nursing and Health Sciences at Uruharo uh, campus, was opened by, by Her Excellency, the Vice, Vice President uh, of the Republic of Uganda in January 2022. We have the library, as you have seen, people are asking me, the library is at the stage of completion. In this budget, Chair Council, you have already given us money uh, and a budget to finish the library. So this is the project of completion. If it was not for COVID, this library will be complete. And we hope to tarmac the road of BS to the road network, including the chapel of the Good Shepherd. Yes. Appreciation. Uh, I want to really appreciate the Lord for the far he has brought us. We thank the government. We thank our founding chancellor as BSU, our Jaja, Bishop Dr. Elisha Chamgambi, who actually we know is going to future more, including all council members, the current, the previous, and all of you for the work you've done. We appreciate our chancellor, board of trustees. We appreciate the Chair Council of the Current, Professor Kenneth Kagame, for your oversight role. And Professor Elsa Biti for starting on very well the far we have gone. We have, um, I wanted to say, Professor Vangamba, you are appreciated. And his uh, appendix is already attached. His attribute, Professor Rukari, is already given. So you know that it is, the recognition is given, and we appreciate that. We want also to appreciate Dr. Kosam from Inter-University Council for East Africa for making it to BSU. Our students, the staff, the alumnus, and everyone here, may God bless you for the good work you are doing. To God be the glory, our God reigns. I would like to take this singular honor that the Chancellor has bestowed on me that I should invite the guest of honor to give us 
her remarks or the remarks of the family of Mrs. Gwen Rukare and the, the entire family. I don't know if you come here, we'll bring the microphone there. Whatever you choose, we shall do. She can come here, maybe they see her. Dora, come here. We need the Rukares here, if you don't mind. The guest of one of the function is Mrs. Gwene Rukare and the entire family. That's the very reason we are here. Praise God. The Vice Chancellor, the Right Reverend Dr. Bishop Sheridan, the Chairperson, University Council, and the Vice Chancellor, my daughter, Kamatinis. Before I say anything, I would like to say that I thank God for this day. And not only this day, but I thank God that I have been able to join you today. <laughs> Shall I remove the mask? Yes. I have. The reason why I'm saying that, since last year, December, up to April, I was not well. I was in India for four months, being treated against cancer. So I'm here as a miracle because I should not really <laughs> cheat God. So ever since I came back in April, I was under confinement because my uh, health was not good. My immunity was so low. I had no strength. So I was confined in my house under the care of medical people and these people around me. But when this, came, this thing came, when the invitation came, I told my children that you are not going to bog me down. I am going. So here I am. I am praising God for this day for two reasons. For my life and for the life of our dear daddy, we used to call him, dear professor, my dear husband and friend to remember him. So that is the reason I am here. Now, I would like on behalf of my family and my own behalf to thank the Chancellor, the Right Reverend Dr. Fred Sheridan Mwesuba, Vice Chancellor Professor Mauda Kamatenis, and the management of the Bishop Stewart for honoring my husband, Professor Enoch Echurkari, today. We don't take it for granted. It is indeed very humbling that you have decided to honor Enoch, who was the first chancellor of this great university. Thank you all very much. Professor Enoch Urkari, who hailed from initially Vare and later Rwemfogo Kashaka, was the eldest son of Muzei Yokana Havkwatsizo, of Yokana Havkwatsizo's seven children. As a young man, 
Enoch was devoted, was a devoted Christian and a, a st student who went to who went on to achieve the highest academic honor by being appointed professor of education at Makerere University. And later the Vice Chancellor of Bishop Stewart University. If I could diverse he was not a vice chancellor, but if I remember his sleepless nights, sleepless nights on a hard chair, someone came in and said, Enoch, this is not fair for you. Can't the university offer you a, a better office, a better, bet, better furniture? He was sitting in what Baganda called Masanjuti. Do you know it? This hard, hard, hard wood. But he didn't mind. He really worked very hard to make this university take off. And I would be cheating if I don't even mention the retired Bishop Elisa Yamugambi. He's the one who gave him energy. He's the one who encouraged him. He said, don't give up. Because it was very, very difficult for them to start this great university. But I'm glad they stuck their guts. And this is where we are, this great, great university. And it will keep on being great. Now, I understand his friend and brother, if Professor Ephraim Kamutu, will maybe ind will indicate by, by indicate about how Enoch was and who was a just a accomplished academic and an administrator. He also was a man of unquestionable integrity, professionalism, and deeply devoted to the Lord. He was committed and loving, a committed and loving husband, as well as a, a, a parent who he was always, always available for fathering the children. And not only his children, any child to Enoch was a child. And he, would, he said, a child must be accorded love and care. Enoch was very committed to the idea of establishing a university in Ankole. To this end, he, together with several others, purposefully worked hard to, re to realize this vision. He was extremely happy to see the establishment of Bishop Stewart University, as we know that, as we know it, Bishop Stewart University had a very special place in his heart and life. We, we as a family, would like to see that his legacy lives on here at the, at the Bishop University, at Bishop Stewart University, and therefore offer an academic scholarship that will initially run for five years. We thank you all once again for this very thoughtful gesture. And as, a, as the family of Professor Rukari, we shall remain forever grateful and pledge to remain friends of Bishop Stewart University. God bless you all. And I don't know. Yes. Uh, Madam Vice Chancellor, can you please come here? We are sorry, who, whoever did that. My Lord it. Bishop, uh, Council okay. Members. I will request that we receive this.
Professor Eno Karukare family. Purpose of fund scholarship for a bachelor of education degree. Per Bishop Stewart University, 50 million Uganda shillings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Umusai go gunaziza nebaza yesomulo kozi Which one? Oh yeah. The question, yeah. Let us pray. Our dear loving Lord, miracles don't come any bigger. We are here supposed to be giving back to this family, and they are here giving to us. This is amazing. But your word in Proverbs 3.27 says, Withhold not good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to give it to them. Thank you that you've given them the capacity to be able to give and the heart to give. May you bless them more so that they will be able to get more so that they have to meet their needs, but also to meet the needs of those who are in need. We thank you, we praise you, and we pray for Gweni. May you continue to give her good health and strength. Thank you for that miracle you've given to her to be able to come and be present when her husband is being remembered and honored in this great way. Thank you for giving her the strength that she has not been rep represented. She has been there. Thank you for the great memories between her and her husband. Thank you for the great contribution of Professor Kari to this nation and to Bishop Stewart University. May you continue to further the fruits of that great contribution. It is the reason why this university is now where it is and renowned. Bless us and guide us to continue that torch of light to all nations through this great university. We thank you, we praise you, honor you through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon Gweni, be upon the family, be upon this university, be upon this scholarship scheme that has been put in place, that it will be greatly well used to further the edu education in this country. May that blessing be with you all now and always. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, my Lord Bishop. Hallelujah. This is so good. Let us appreciate the family of Professor Enoka Rukari, the late. We indeed thank God so much for the scholarship to God be the glory. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take this opportunity to welcome our keynote speaker, Honorable Professor Ephraim Kamontu. And uh, allow me to observe protocol. The protocol would be Professor El Sabiti to take over as the chair of the session and then to welcome Honorable Professor Kamontu. I will take to him the microphone and then he continues. Honorable, you're most welcome. Professor Kenneth Kagame, I am so sorry. He will be leading us in this session as the chairperson 
of the session. Members, choir members, please come over to help me with this. Choir members, let us lift this. Rose, you have already done it. But it's my honor and pleasure to invite Professor Kamuntu to address the congregation. Professor Kamuntu is well known. He's on uh, the council for since the beginning. We know him. He has been a very senior government official in several cabinet positions. He has been a donor professor in universities different universities, so we have no better person than Professor Kamuntu to give us the life and achievements of late Professor Enoch Tukari. Over to you, Professor. Thank you very much, Chairman, my Lord. The title of this memorial lecture for Professor Enoch Tukari I have chosen is a model of servant transformational leadership of all time. And Professor Rukare is a giant. In all fairness, there is no way I could have comprehensively covered his contribution in several areas of, an, of human endeavor. I have therefore confined this first lecture, Professor Rukare's contribution in establishing this university. I have left the other areas of his academic career at Makerere University. His contribution to the establishment of the tertiary college for, for studies in Western College Diocese, which almost became a university before this. His contribution on commissions and research projects in supervising schools. That I have left for subsequent lectures. I would therefore like to begin by warmly welcoming you all and by thanking you most sincerely for setting aside everything you'd have been doing and choosing to join Bishop Stuart University in its activities of the week celebrating its 20 years of existence. I commend the university management for organizing the activities of the week and for hosting this event. The Izabe Club, it has been a talk of town. Well done, university. It is indeed a great pleasure to see so many friends of the university including, I was expecting, the founding chancellor and bishop, Right Reverend Elijah Chamgambi, to be here. But whoever is representing him, I want him to know we appreciate his contribution. The daughters stand up. Yes, they did. Yes. I want them to know that the first chancellor of the university Right, Reverend Elijah Chamgambi, I'll make several reference to him in contribution and partnership with Professor Rikari in establishing this university. I'm very also pleased to see the first chairman of the governing council still going strong, Professor Eri Saviti is still here. Very pleasing indeed. Very pleased. Yes. <laughs> John Walker, <laughs> the founding first chairman of governing council, Professor Elisabeti, as you can hear, is a John Walker. He's still strong. And several members, including Professor, we used to call him Zake, but he's Bangamba. He followed in the foots of Professor Kale and made useful contribution. I'm so pleased he's here. Professor Vibangamba, and so many founding members of the Board of Trustees of Ankole Diocese and several eminent personalities in the community. Friends, you will allow me to be a little bit personal. 
I'm particularly pleased to see Professor Rukari's family friends, his family and friends. And they include his wife, Gwende Rukari, whom has spoken, and the friends. They include Professor Alex Nganwa. If Nganwa, you can stand up, because I'm going to be personal. I, uh, I think I'm the bridge between these families. I have seen Frida Rutega, president. Yeah, I've been making reference. I want you, some of you may not know. Gweni is a daughter to the late ZK Mungonya. Mungonya was the Engans of Ankole and Minister for Lands during colonial time. Also, you may know Professor Alex Nganwa is the son of Kes Nganwa, who also was in Ganzi of Ankole, a legend in the educational transformation of this country. To see Frida, the daughter of Kamgungun, also being here is, is amazing. Kamgungun was in Ganzi of Ankole as well. I will make reference. Professor Rukare was a son, as you have already known, of Muzeilet Yokana Habkwasizo. Habkwasizo was a, a prominent chief, Gomorrah chief, during colonial time. Why I'm mentioning this? These families I have mentioned were comrades in the struggle for transforming Ankole. And if you are me, to see their children maintaining the friendship of the families and the spirit of their parents to transform society as their parents did for better, it is very pleasing indeed, and they deserve a clap. That spirit to see the children of these people who made a meaning in our lives still strong, maintaining the spirit of their ancestors, how comforting it is. Gwene, you, you permit me to commend you for being a great wife, Professor Rukari, and a blessing to your children. Gwene is great. I call her president because in her own right, the daughter of ZK, she was a president of Mother's Union. And from that time, I have already said president. I don't even mention her name, but I only did it today. And using the Bible, Gwene is great, as the Bible says, he who finds a prudent wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. And Professor Rukare is great because he received a favor from God when he married Gweni. You have seen what she has done today. <laughs> Friends, these things don't happen by accident. In a special way, I want to thank the Right Reverend Dr. Fred Sheridan Mwesugwa, the current chancellor of the university. For those who are, may not be familiar with university culture, university is not like any other company. No. So to have a bishop who is a chancellor and who he himself has been a member of academic staff, a don, it is a blessing to this university. Why I'm saying so, the university needs academic freedom. The university needs to think independently of its owners and free from external pressure. Have a chancellor who understands those ideas of a university to allow it to grow. All these exponential growth the vice chancellor was quoting could not be possible 
if you had a chancellor who does not give freedom of the university to act as a university. He himself keen on research evidence. I thank you because this university has been fortunate to have chancellors that allow the university to grow as a university. The chairman of the governing council, Professor Kenneth, we fondly call him KK. We appreciate your focus in guiding the council. The vice chancellor, Maud Kama Tennessee, as you can see, this university, you know a university is universal. You cannot have a university local. No. The partnership you have developed over years has made a meaning and made this university ranked, as you have seen, among the best in the country. Members of the governing council and the management, I want to thank you for organizing this week and for inviting me to give a keynote address and a memorial lecture in honor of a great friend, Professor Eno Karukare, a prominent scholar a great administrator and the founding vice chancellor of Bishop Stewart University. This gives me a very rare opportunity to pay tribute to a friend, a family friend. And I thank Gwenny and the family of Professor Rukare for holding me at least in regard and choosing me among his many, many valued friends to be able to give a memorial lecture in his honor and for his role in establishing this university. I'm humbled and I'm forever grateful. You know, Gwenny, I have very vivid memory. And uh, whenever I came home, I would find these children <laughs> and they would, you know, Quickly, they want to greet me, but their greeting was special and has been enduring. With their small hands, give me five, and, <laughs> and it would be a clap. It has endured. This thing is down deep in my heart. Every time I see Don, however old, and Dora, however old, I say, give me five. This is how Gwenny and Professor Kerry brought up these children who, in their own right, remain a legacy of Professor Zufkarel's greatness. It is therefore a great honor for me to give the first memorial lecture honoring Professor Zufkarel as the founding vice chancellor of the university. This year, as you must have heard, the university is celebrating 20 years since 2002 when it was established. The vice chancellor was clear, this university has inspired generational transformation of our society through its his holistic education. Thousands of students have graduated from this university and these are leaders, as I'm talking, and operators in various sectors of our economy. Thousands of people have been employed by this university. The university has come of age. The university has made remarkable progress and is highly respected in the country. We don't take things for granted. I want you for a moment imagine if this university didn't exist, if this university was not conceived, if this university was not established, how many thousands of deserving students would never have seen the inside of a university? 
Think for a moment. This is how you get the magnitude. This university is not in the Bible. It is not one of God's creation. No, it was conceived and established. And those who conceived it, we now take it for granted it is here. In this regard, friends, those who started this university deserve to be thanked and deserve to be hailed for the contribution establishing this university. <laughs> friends, I'm sure Professor Elisabeth and some colleagues, you'll bear me out. Establishing a university is complex. It's very demanding. And just for purposes of defining the magnitude of the challenge, Professor Kare, first, permit me just to give you a snapshot of what it means to start a university. And I want to begin by thanking Ankole Diocese for the bold resolution it took in 2002 to establish the university at Kakova at this hill. University, yes, we must, we must really thank. That was a bold decision. You see why I'm saying this one with passion? I, I, I was there and I can share with you first to establish a university, number one, you must have a letter of interim authority. And I will describe it, what it means. You can't start a university unless you have that letter of interim authority. And to get a letter of in interim authority is hard. In the first place, you must apply. And in applying, you must show that you have the necessary infrastructure requirements. You must have enough funds on your account. You must fulfill the infrastructure requirements which include adequate land, adequate lecture rooms, adequate student union space, adequate laboratories and libraries, you must have administrative block. You must have academic staff facilities. And there is a long list, a checklist of indicators which they use for assessing the application before a lot of interim authorities granted to you. It's not easy. In other words, you can't start even when they grant it to you, you don't start to be a university. What now normally happens, you call it a project as you are preparing to become a university. Yes. Then the second step, which is equally hard. After you have gone through all that, you are also required to apply for provisional license. A provisional license, that is the second step. You jump first step, interim authority. Now, after you, they have checked and inspected, think about it, and you will see how Professor Kari was an asset. A provisional license to operate a university requires the applicant to give detailed financial base. Yeah. You must show the form of governance you are going to use in running the university. You must outline the academic programs to be offered. You must show you have enough human resource base, including the academic and senior administrative staff. You should, must show a timetable indicating the steps and plans you are taking towards achieving the objects of the university. Mark you, it's not like a company. No, you are licensed and you are supervised. There is National Council for Higher Education to do that. They do inspection, they check to make sure these are indeed in place. Then to be a university, you must be chartered. 
it's not easy. This university is chartered. The university must prepare and submit to the National Council for Higher Education a report of its activities each year of its operation and detailed evaluation of steps they are taking towards achieving the objects of the university. And they must meet prescribed standards prescribed by the National Council for Higher Education. This must be done before you can be given a charter. I'm giving this background to show the magnitude of the challenge the Ankara Diocese faced in 2002 in its quest to implement its resolution to establish a university. They really critically needed a competent, effective, and knowledgeable vice chancellor. Not only a vice chancellor, but you need a, a vice chancellor with a pioneering spirit. You know you can have people, but have a spirit of pioneering something, or putting something which is not there, and you put it there. That's why this title of this lecture is Professor Eno Karukare, a model of servant and transformational leadership of all time comes in. In preparing this presentation, I consulted and I got several testimonies about Professor Rukare as a very prominent a servant and a transformational leader. If I begin with the testimony of the first chancellor and chairman of the Lycosian Synod, Right Reverend Bishop Elijah Chamgambi, I wish he was here. After the Synod had resolved to start a university, as a bishop and chancellor, he was faced with several challenges on how you can implement the resolution of the synod. You know, the synod is like a parliament. They pass a resolution, they go home, and you are left to implement the resolution. It's not easy. So the bishop was charged with the task, among others, of looking for a vice chancellor. Notice. Of looking for a vice chancellor with credentials. Academic credentials. Academic credibility. You must be academically credible. Matters of university must be dealt with. University people. You must also look for a vice chancellor who shares your vision. These things you say it verbally. Yet you can be credible, but share the vision of the synod when you are not a member of the synod. To look for a vice chancellor with integrity. The vice chancellor that would work as an academic and administrative head of the proposed university. Huge challenge. So Bishop Elijah Chamgambi started looking for the vice chancellor. He approached four professors, and none of them was willing to join him. In what he termed, in what he termed, this is Elijah Chamgambi's words, he termed this job Omtara. And uh, Vice Chancellor, <laughs> you described it in, in English. Omtara, according to Vice Chancellor here, is starting from scratch. It is a harsh territory. It is hard. Even he himself, Professor, no, Bishop Chamgambi, knew it was going to be hard because you are starting from scratch. There are very few people who want to start from nothing. And Chamgambi narrates how he went to see Professor Rukare, and Professor Rukare's initial reaction was, I am retired. I am retired and I'm not and I'm not able to come and thank you. You can imagine how Professor how Bishop Chamgambi felt. But for those who know, Professor Chamgambi is not a man who gives up so easily. 
He went a second time and shared with Professor Kare. This time, when he was present, that's what he says, when he was present, so the bishop shared his vision and the idea of starting a university and how hard it was becoming to find a committed professional and accomplished scholar to start a university as a vice chancellor. Again, as Gwenny has described her, her husband, Professor Rukari finally accepted and said, I quote him, Kanjembarara, I hinder the Merwin how. If you can put yourself in his shoes, this is a retired, advanced, very scholarly, but the passion he had and the respect he had for the bishop. Regardless of his health condition, he said, well, I will try. And there is no doubt Professor Kare greatly helped the diocese put in place all the requirements that the Council for Higher Education needed before they could give B Bishop Stuart University a letter of in interim authority to start. Professor Kare, they had every necessary qualification. He had served Makerere University as head of the Department of Education, as dean of the School of Education, and as a member of Makerere University Council Govern University, University Governing Council. He was therefore a great asset in getting all the approvals that were needed by National Council of Higher Education. There is no doubt that Professor Enoch Kerkari made invaluable contribution in the formation of the university. The first chancellor and chairman. I want again to share with you the testimony of the bishop, Elijah Chamgambi, which he gave as we were trying to prepare a memorial lecture for Professor Eno Kerkare. Bishop Chamgan confirms Professor Kare was a wise man who would listen to any advice and contribution from anybody, starting from the bishop down to any local person who had interest in the university project. This is a professor, very wise, and could listen, starting from the bishop all the way down to the local person that had any interest in the university project. He was a professor who was down to earth and learned from every person regardless of their status. You are a professor, you are willing to learn from anybody regardless of his status. And the president is quoted. The president gave the assurance and support Professor Kare, and I quote him. I'm quoting the president this time to Kare. If you want support, I will give. Go and start the university. End of quotation. Those were the words of the president. <laughs> so if the president has okayed you, and let's be truthful. If the bishop had not gone with Professor Kari, this is counterfactual. He's doubtful whether he would have got this reception. <laughs> but as you know, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Professor Kare's daughter, Dora, was already working in the State House. So think about the president. You have been with the daughter of this man, and this man comes to you asking for, how can you refuse? <laughs> My goodness, this is fantastic. This is great. So indeed, friends, government granted the university all the infrastructure requirements which were at National Teachers College Kakoba, which was a government institution training diploma, diploma for teachers in primary and secondary education. Just think, 
the requirements that you would need for interim authority, which required infrastructure requirements. With Professor Rukare's initiative to be a vice chancellor and consequently going with the chancellor to the president, the granting of infrastructure facilities at this campus boosted the efforts of fulfilling the requirements from the National Council for Higher Education. No question about it. And we thank the president for this support, and we thank the president for the friendship he had with Professor Kari. <laughs> Professor Kari was very endowed indeed, as you can see. You don't get 50 million from nobody. Professor Kari was endowed. Professor Kari was, had worked. Professor Kari had earned. Professor Kari had retired to enjoy the benefit of his retirement. But he left that comfort zone of his retirement and came what the Bishop Chamgan called Omitara or a desert, starting from crash. Just imagine, you are in retirement, and you have all the things you have earned in your life to enjoy in your retirement. You now leave all that. I want you to see why we call him servant. You leave all that to come and subject yourself to the hard desk <laughs> when you are describing, to the hard desk in order, yeah, we were with him. The thought of failing. He couldn't conceive, he couldn't imagine it. How can you start and fail? Of course, I was there because I'm also a founding member of governing council of this university. So what I'm saying is I witnessed it. According to Saviti, Professor Rukari was one who convinced me to sign the appointment letter from Bishop Chamgambi to be chairman of the governing council of the proposed university. I want you to see, those who know Eri Sabiti, I'm so sorry I can say this now that I have been. Professor Sabiti is a man of high standard and is very cautious indeed. He doesn't rush. And to accept taking responsibility, I know once he does, that's it. But it is very hard to get him to accept. So we credit Professor Kari for convincing Professor Eri to become chairman of governing council. According to you, Professor Kari was humble, but very wise and very intelligent. He had special respect for every member of council. He was highly qualified. He was very credible dependable and reliable. And he was a good administrator. He respected the council members and its resolution. And as council, we never had any conflict with him. We freely worked with him when he had no money. He was very good at implementing decisions of council. He was always available, ready, and consult. He accommodated and handled staff issues effectively. He had unquestionable Christian values. And in conclusion, according to Sabiti, the university ran smoothly, peacefully, and in an orderly manner during Professor Rukari's leadership as the vice chancellor. That's Professor Rukari. <laughs> you know, university people, conflict resolution in the university is a science and art. And there are very few people who have that capacity. The university, you know, the university, you have this. Uh, a university is different from a high school, largely because at the university, you are expected to be mature 
you are expected to have developed your capacity to think and think rationally and objectively and make a decision that solve problems. But you are also granted academic freedom to do so. And ideas are always conflicting. A vice chancellor who can manage that situation of conflicting ideas, which is necessary and yet moves smoothly, particularly at the formation of the university, we shall forever be grateful to Professor Rukari. It was great. Now, Professor Sabiti recommends for those who want to be like Professor Rukari, you need the following. I'm literally quoting Professor Sabiti, you must be a listening leader, you must respect staff because you are here for each one, for each other. You must be dedicated to your work, make positive contribution for the good of the university, work beyond time, listen to issues of your staff, and people who don't listen don't do well in any institution. Be a mentor to those working below you, share ideas, and practice self-sacrifice. And this is exactly what Professor Sabiti learned from Enoch Rukari. Virtues any vice chancellor should emulate. Friends, this university is a church-founded university. And before it was done, there are those who worked for them. And one of them is Canon Philmon Tinker, who at the time was a diocesan education secretary. And he made testimonies about Professor Curry, whom he worked with during the formation process of the university. And he comments, Professor Kari was a renowned personality, both nationally and internationally, and this was an advantage to Bishop University in its inf infancy. He was very instrumental in guiding the Assistant Council and Board of Education as we plan, planned for Bishop Stewart University formation. Professor Knoll, who was the Vice Chancellor of Uganda Christian University at the time, had special reference for Professor Rukare. He admired his zeal and determination, and that is why when Bishop Stewart University applied to affiliate with Uganda Christian University, it was easily done because of Professor Rukare's relationship with Professor Noll. In fact, Professor Noll did that without even consulting the University Council because he knew the Council would respect Professor Kare's reputation and integrity. And indeed, Uganda Christian University made a memorandum of understanding with Bishop Stewart University. And the university was able to grant degrees of Uganda Christian University from this campus. No, you should really see the university here, it would have been difficult to grant university. And by granting degrees of Uganda Christian University from, from here, largely because of Professor Rukari's reputation and relation with Professor Noll, this university is achieving this progress that you are seeing today. <laughs> Professor Rukari introduced the bursary fund support children of pastors and the beneficiaries of this fund. They include Dennis Kakuba. I'm sure Kakuba is a lecturer here. Yeah, this is a, this is a product of that fund which he set. And there is also uh, Mr. Caleb Singwire, who is the son of Reverend Bairwe. This Caleb now is a, lecture, is a headmaster at Nyakatura Memorial Senior Secondary School. This is Professor Kerry. He supported the idea of making diocesan education secretary to be 
an ex official member of the University Council. He also raised the rank of University Champlain to be the third in hierarchy. And his aim was to ensure that Christian values in the university are protected and promoted in its governance. This is Professor Kerry. The last group is the staff who worked with him. You need to know their reaction team. You know, pioneering work for those who have been pioneering is very hard, very, very hard. You are starting from scratch. Look at the comfort we have. But that started. You are, you are an egg. With the university, the staff had very special reverence for Professor Kare and gave him testimony. And I just singled out a few. According to the work, the staff, Professor Kare was always available in office to guide, direct, and give counsel. He had a strong touch for both staff and students. He was very thrift and sensitive to spending. He was very sensitive at spending funds. This is very important. You simply don't know how. I think Professor Bangamba is here. Bangamba is here. Yeah, why I'm singling him out? We were constructing structures here, and some workers stole cement. The man almost was, he became clerk of works because he didn't want to see people steal. Starting things is not easy. And Professor Kare was sensitive at spending university funds. He would always take priorities very seriously. He was very sensitive to environmental issues. He demolished all the unnecessary structures on this hill, especially Peter Latrin. <laughs> you must have flushing toilets, <laughs> Peter Latrin. The staff knew him as a pious and committed peaceful man. He would say sorry to any person whom he felt has offended, regardless of his status. He would carefully choose and use words as he talked and addressed any audience without offending anybody. He was good in public relations, he was always available and on time, and on time at the, at the station for any consultation. To take any serious decision, he would first consult the staff members. Yeah, consultation, he would consult. Not because he didn't know, he knew. But university is governed differently. You need a consensus. And he did. He believed in meetings, and he would have meetings regularly of staff and management. And he always challenged the staff to belong. He challenged the staff to belong, and he believed in corporate governance and ownership. And he would say, Bishop Stuart University is our university. There are people, yeah, don't worry about, don't worry about the umbrella, I can stand. I don't know, you, you, you need to understand this. There are people who come to this university as if it belonged somewhere. This university is your university. And I appeal to the students. Because the university distinction is, if you cannot distinguish between wrong and right as a university student, if you cannot separate these two, then you are a danger to society. And that's why Professor Kari would endeavor to consult you so that you distinguish what's wrong and what's right. Why I'm saying so, friends? 
it is typical, common in high school, and sometimes in universities, unfortunately. You go to the dining hall, and the food is not good. And you organize a strike as a student. And the strike goes to the laboratory, goes to the library. You break windows, you break. And you begin to think, if you're a university student, how could the library have been involved in your conflict? Surely, you have failed to separate. If the food is bad, first the guy who has cooked it that way. But to break a window, to break a laboratory, to burn books, that's not university. And that's why Professor Rukari is special. He knew what's wrong and what's right, but he would still consult you, see whether you measure. What a man. He challenged the university to belong. This university is our university. If it is your university, you don't. Shh. Fantastic. He was a good manager, and he tried to know his staff and students by name. This is hard these days with population in classes to know the names of the students. You know people know names of their students. Is a mark real of effort. And this is Professor Rukari, he would know you by name. Was always free and ready to interact with students. Professor Rukari was God-loving personality who had good pioneering spirit, which gave the staff a wonderful image of university that had good Christian core values that all members felt were being cherished and appreciated. This is why, this is the staff now we are giving testimony. This is why the staff were ever willing and available to work, even when they were paid less and sometimes late. They were willing to do so for the respect they gave Professor Enoch Rukare. Indeed, Bishop Stewart University is what it is because of Professor Rukare's zeal, commitment, and contribution, and the firm foundation he laid for this institution. According to staff, whoever wants to take any pride of this university should not forget the people who saw the vision, shared the vision, and implemented the vision. I want to conclude, friends. My Lord Bishop, friends of the university, and Professor Rukari's family. You know, leaders have existed throughout history of mankind. All societies have, and will continue to have leaders. Some good leaders, some not so good, but you will have leaders all the same. And some leaders become leaders as a result of heredity. You inherit it if you are a king. Professor Rukare didn't inherit this position. He earned it. Others become leaders as a result of force through acts of war. Professor Rukare didn't do this. In modern times, and I can give my own personal testimony, we have leaders through political process. And the question, as we conclude this lecture, we want to ask, what is it that distinguished Enoch Rukari as an effective vice chancellor as an effective leader that we should be remembering today and we should emulate. If you ask that question, what is it? That's the conclusion I want to submit to you. What, in my own judgment, distinguished Professor Kare is what I call servant leadership traits. Have servant leadership traits. Servant leaders are those who lead 
because they genuinely want to serve others. It's very rare, but they are. People who will go to any length in their desire to serve others. The essence of this leadership is described in the Bible. If you look at Matthew chapter 20, verse 25, it is written, and I'm paraphrasing, it is written that Jesus called his disciples and said, whoever wants to become great among you, you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be great among you, you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you, you must be your slave. I'm paraphrasing, but you can check it. Matthew chapter 20, verse 25. Servant leadership, that's what I am. Just as the Son of Man did not come to serve, but be served. No. Just as Son of Man did not come to serve, to be served, but to serve, and give his life as a ransom for many. The essence of servant leadership, the traits that Professor Enoch Kari had and distinguished him is precisely this. And there is a consensus. As I was preparing this memorial lecture, I consulted. There is a consensus among all his friends and the testimonies that I have given in this lecture of those who worked with him. Professor Kare placed the needs of this university way ahead of his own university, of his own needs. When is this man is class? This is a man retired sitting on a hard desk. Why? Because the needs of university stood. He took the needs of university above his own. That is what we call servant leadership. Servant. To desire to serve others instead of yourself. Listen, even when he had retired and was, uh, and was advanced in age, this is true. Even when he had retired and was advanced in age, he agreed to do a thankless and pioneering work in establishing Bishop Stuart University, of which we are all very proud today. Servant leadership traits. But not only that, for some of us who worked with him, he had what is now known as transformational leadership. Transformational leadership is characterized by the desire to change the status quo, focusing on higher purpose of creating change for a better future with the transforming effect. No, friends, transformation For some of us who came here when this place was starting, and you see today, can only be done by leadership that has that transforming. You want to change the status quo, you focus on a higher purpose of establishing a better future with a transforming effect. That's Professor Kari. If you want to contrast it, there is a contrast. The contrast is transactional leadership. Transactional leadership, and I can say this because I have seen it at a very close range. Transactional leadership is characterized by exchange relationship, mpankwe, mpankwe, with no enduring purpose, binding the leader and the follower. We have seen it in the electoral process, yeah? You give money, they give you votes. Finish. That is transactional. No, not Professor Kari. His is transformational. Professor Kari shared the vision of establishing university for generating knowledge. He did. Professor Kari loved education. You better believe it. That's why, regardless of his retirement and advanced age, when it came to education, establishing a university, when it came to generating knowledge, 
when it came to building servanthood character relevant to social, political, and economic transformation, the philosophy of this university, Professor Kare stood up to be counted. Professor Kare is with his creator now, but his ideas and legacy will live forever, touching and transforming the lives of so many. He was indeed a true servant and transformational leader of all time. I thank you for listening to me. God reigns. Thank you. That was a great, great speech. An extra hand clap. Very great, very nice. Huh? Now allow me to invite Professor Sabit. Professor Sabit has already been mentioned in the speech that has passed, but Sabit sat back with me in CV, sat at Ontario School with me for six years. Even Professor Kamun to Ontario School, he was my house captain. So, but Professor Sabit he went to Makere and distinguished himself as a scorer. Doctorate in agriculture, became a precepts of uh, Professor Rukari, is yet having more universities. Professor Sabiti, you can give your comments, your relationship with this great group. You are welcome. Thank you very much, <coughs> the chairman, our chief guest. Because of time, allow me to say all protocols observed. <coughs> I know we have sat for quite a long time listening to to a great speaker who has given us everything we wanted to hear. And under normal circumstances, uh, a, a paper like this when you are honoring a great leader, you don't discuss it. Because you will contradict yourself and you don't allow any questions. <laughs> because we are honoring a great leader. And the this is what we would call a citation, because he's being honored. Professor Okari is being honored for what he did when he was still alive as the pioneering vice chancellor of this great university. So, what I can only do is to add a retro that Professor Kamuntu, who was also here, who started from scratch with us, other than that, what I stand here as a witness 
of the speaker, of the keynote speaker. Because I was here, and I'm still here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm still here serving on the council, but not a chairperson. What I found special in Professor, late Professor Kari was his humility. In 2003, I had finished being a dean for 10 years at Makere University, Dean of Faculty of Agriculture and Forestry. And it was a very, very stressful job. So I wanted to retire and return to research and supervising students. So when I was in my office, I had footsteps, slow footsteps, which were unique because they were different from the footsteps of my students. I said this cannot, cannot be from my students. So when he knocked, I don't think he didn't knock because I don't, I don't op close my doors. He entered with a book, greeted me, and opened the book where all members of the University Council had signed except me. And I was number one, not only a member, but being a chairperson. So he said, your father the bishop has asked me to bring this book to you, to sign, and to accept to be chairperson of the, his, the university, the, the Angkori Diocese, is starting. I said, who is my father? I have one father. He said, no, Bishop, Elisha Chamgambi told all the synod members that you are his son and you will not, accept, will not reject, you will accept. Here you have a professor I knew very well when we were at McCary together. And here there is Professor, Ch I mean, Bishop Chamgambi, whom I had one time invited to come to our village uh, in Itozo to consecrate our church, and he had come. So I was torn. I was torn. I was looking at two great people, whether I should say yes or say no. And I told Professor Kelly that, look, I don't know how to work with the churches. He said, even me, I don't know, but I have accepted. We will work together and those others. So because of that, his humility, the way he approached me, I accepted and put my signature in that book to be the, the chairperson. And apparently, we shared the same thinking of serving people, of serving our country, of serving our diocese without uh, d demands. At that time, the diocese had no money, had few, so a few students, very little money. To me, I did not, and him, money did not 
become an issue, we all had the same vision. Then the other aspect, my daughter had just finished her master's in agribusiness at Makere University. And my plan was to get her into Makere University, a great university. Professor Rukari asked me that I, I hear you have a daughter who have finished. Can you also allow her to come and lecture? I said, but there is no university yet there. There is a great university here. How do I allow my daughter to go and lecture in a university that is not yet existing? It's not yet there. And again, because of the love I had for Ankole Diocese, you know, I did my O-Revo at Mbara High School, and that church, my bishop, modeled me. And I think I am here because of the modeling of that church, the way we were taught have high integrity, to serve, and to love our country. So I said, Kari, cut with the chair hang. And Jacqueline is one of the pioneers of lecturers here uh, who has also made a contribution. So that's how Professor Kari, in his humility, he was able to convince the son I mean the, the father and the daughter. <laughs> to me, that is great. You have to be a great leader uh, like that. When we came, we were having our meetings at the church at Uraharo. There was an old building. I don't know if it's still there. With falling uh cardboards, ceiling cardboards. And I had a council of great people like Professor Kamuntu, Pro Professor Ret Ntozi, Gutwaminji, quite many people. And sometimes if the rain rain would chase us from the the council room. There was nothing like a, you call a council room, we would call a meeting room but would remain there and plan for this university. So Professor Kamuntu, who, who gave this keynote speaker, I mean key, keynote speech or paper, knows that we all accepted serve under harsh conditions. That's true, it's a scratch. And no money at all. We were using our own money. Professor Okari had a small car, white, I think I still remember. He would use that car without asking for money. To me, that was really patriotism in a vice chancellor of starting. Actually, that university started as a private company because it was not re recognized by any, any, any government institution. Actually, I would call it, we, we, we started as a, a rebel institution. We were helped by Professor Vtajira, who was the, the legal advisor, to call it a company so that we could get money from students legally. Other than that, they were going to arrest us. So we did that. The other aspect that Professor Rokari had, he, re he made sure he registered all of the donations with the government bodies. When Angola Diocese gave this land, you see here, and the buildings, he went and registered it as a donation. 
I hope that registration is still there. He wanted to make sure that the, the, the donation, in his own mind, what if you get a, a new bishop who can, who can reverse his mind and say, this is ours. So he was very smart. Regarding, you make a donation, you have to register it in, with the government body so that it is yours forever. Now, my bishop, you cannot withdraw the, this land. <laughs> Legally, it is ours. But it belongs to the church. The, 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 the important role he prayed again as we struggled through his daughter, Dora. He used to tell me he has a daughter in the state house who is working behind the scenes. Whenever we had challenges and today, I was very happy to meet you, Dora. You worked hard with your dad to make us. And uh, Dora this morning amused me that she used to see me driving my pickup in Makere University. I like pickups <laughs> because I am a farmer and a field person. So you, you put my truck behind there and uh, do your work and go home. But she was able to recognize me because of my pickup. My pickup was a brand. <laughs> so we really want to thank you for having prayed uh, that behind the scenes uh, whenever we were struggling to see the president. Uh, I did a small error. This, the keynote speaker made was that uh, by the time we went to see the president, Professor Kari was not feeling well. So he couldn't join us. Uh, I went with Profe I mean, uh, the, the, the Bishop Chamgambi uh, to see him. And uh, the following day, I mean, the, the previous day, my colleague, uh, Chidu Makuya, who was a minister, who was teaching together at Makere, refused to see us. Can you imagine? And at that time, we started at this university. I don't think people wanted this diocese to get the university. The way we were treated by the officials they should forgive me for saying this. We did not get good cooperation. I don't know why. I'm still searching. Here you have professor. The only word, one time when he met me, he said, who can deny you a, a university when you have a powerful council? But then he would not respond to our letters until he was directed to do so. So, Professor Kare, because of those links he had, the State House and the links we had with the UCU. Actually, National Council for Education had given us two weeks to obtain a home or be deleted, be cancelled, be closed. And they had already laid out a plan to distribute students who were here. I don't know why that was happening, but they had already made a plan to close the university we call it a university because we had all the organs. 
But Professor Okari wisely approached me and said, if I went to Ugandan Christian University and convinced me to have a, mem a memorandum of understanding, and we go under them, we hide under them, couldn't we survive? And indeed, that made us survive. So Professor Kari was very smart. We survived because now UCU called us a study center, but, but retained our name, Bishop Stuart University. That was the wisdom of Professor Kari and his connections. And, and perhaps no could have known that Professor Kari had the connections in the State House. Yes, because the Church of Uganda had planned that uh, no other university should be started. But Angola Diocese decided that to start because we had the, the facilities. The, the other aspect which the Kai had that probably kept council members there, his hospitality. I don't know where he got the service providers at that time. Someone was cooking excellent food, my bishop. That food, I've never forgotten it. And tea, full of milk. Now, council members who were threatening that they are tired, they want to go, after taking the food, they would relax and we continue meeting. He had that hospitality uh, to... to hospitality as a leader. It is very important, by the way. In Rinyankwe and Majinangu, Otari Nyoko Takureva Handa, Omuntia is a Kwecho Kuria, Nobok Botako and Nakora, no Kora. So we would work. So Professor Kari, uh, did a great job you have had and uh, it is befitting it is befitting to recognize him and also a lecture like this is very important to inspire you young people young lecturers so that you can be like him. I don't know how many of you ever knew all that, but I'm sure today many of you will say, oh, I am here because of Professor Kari. This place was really a bush in 2003, but I am amazed at the business which has come out and the students. So really, having a committed person serve the country was very, very important. So, Chairperson, I want confirm what our keynote speaker has said about Professor Kari with my additions and corrections 
that Professor Okari recognition by this university is befitting. So I would like now to request you, or before I request you, let me thank all management led by the vice chancellor. Let me thank council led by Professor Kagame for having had that thought to recognize uh, Professor Okari. As you have heard, the justification is really, really strong. I want to thank our chancellor, who has been very, very supportive, who has allowed the university to be independent, but with your interventions where necessary. And also I want to thank the family of Professor Okari, that this, that heart of, of being hospitable has continued. That's why you have donated. Because Professor Okari loved education. And I want to thank all the friends the students, the staff, for making sure that Bishop Stewart University keeps growing and growing and growing. Thank you very much. My Lord Bishop and the University Council and the guests invited, you will excuse me. I forgot really to introduce these people, which was not kind of me. We have our head of family. Now I have retired in the names of Dr. Donald Rukare, who is absent on duty. Uh, uh, in, in England. Uh, yeah. And then we have. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There were two. There is Daniel. I think you taught Daniel. Yeah. Then there is Dora. No, Dora Rukare Semambo. And unfortunately, we recently lost Dr. Semambo. So they need prayers. And these are some of her, their children. Uh, there is Hirokwa. Uh, there is uh, Naseje. Naseje. There is Navisere. Then there is Na Nasozi. And the two of the girls, one of them is at the uh, uh, Road Development Center campus in Kachika, in Barara. He wa she wanted to be a lawyer. And, and her, her other sister is at MOOBS, doing, I think, business education, division, business? Yeah. So 
there should be Derek he, Daniel, your student, who is bigger than you now, he's so big. <laughs> he's in London also pursuing his PhD. They, but they have all sent their apologies. Then there is Dunstan Lukari, who is here. Uh, and then we have Derek, who was supposed to be here. I think Derek was communicating with the doctor, with Reverend Mukundani. Unfortunately, the, the, his employers could not let him go because they had an important engagement. But he sent his apology. Then we. Hmm? Oh, thank you very much. Okay. So those are the Rikari and the officer prince. And we have also David from Donald. Then when I was invited, I knew that Professor had some friends. And I invited them. You could have invited them but they also graciously ac accepted to come. This is my sister, Mrs. Frida Ortega, who, who was my matron, and she was reminding me that we held, our uh, we held the reception here, our reception here. Then there is another sister of mine, Jane Rakitarate, is here. She can't stand up so easily. Mm -hmm. Then there is Professor Rukare's son. Son, we know we get many sons and children, not biological, but we acquire them. In the names of Professor Iraka John. And uh, then there is Professor Babu Nganwa. Where, where is she? He, he came with his daughter. I always call her uh, bodyguard. His bodyguard. Thank you. And then we have a Fandi, Fandi son. That one is actually a, a niece. And I mean, a nephew to me. Your first, your first what? Class. Class. <laughs> I don't know whether Jackie Chuguru managed to come to represent Uncle George and Auntie Joyce because they, they are afraid they couldn't come. So those are the few people who could easily join me and my family who are were close friends and family members of the Rukari family. Thank you very much indeed, and I'm very sorry to have done that, but you should excuse me at times. Network goes off. <laughs> Feel free any time. If you want to add another person, you have the permission. Uh, allow me to also invite some other guests who came. We have a daughter of our grandfather, the late Archbishop Goyoyo. If she can give us one minute to say hello to you and appreciate. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Naomi Koyo Katembo, and this is my and this is my sister Ruth Koyo Yomwebe. We praise the Lord for this time, and we thank you for honoring um, our parents and for the great works that is taking place here. We thank you for the support. We thank you for um, not forgetting them. A lot of times when we lose our parents, a lot of times when they retire, their, na their names are never mentioned. But through it all, we thank the Lord that today, Professor Rukare, 
we are seeing his works. His names, uh, his works are being, his name is still moving on mm -hmm. through all of us. I think the students, you being here today, I think you have a strong stone that you're standing on. You better work hard, know the Lord. I think that, that is all I have to say. Yeah. Thank you very much. When Mrs. Rukari was speaking, she referred to the head of the family. Now, the generous offer of 50 million that was made must have been in consultation with the children. Would like the family, the children have selected one of them to come and say, how are you? My Lord Bishop and all protocol observed, um, we are very humbled once again um, to just come and say hello to you and to thank you for the thoughtfulness that uh, was put in in organizing um, this function today as part of the 20 years celebration of Bishop Stewart University. We are blessed, we are honored to be a part of this celebration today. I am, uh, as you know, as Dora Rukare Semambo, and um, we are very happy to be here today. I uh, want, I suppose, if I can, uh, the Vice Chancellor, Professor, if you can allow me to ask the choir to come and we just sing a blessing because the, the bishop has already blessed us, but I, I would like to to say that we let's sing together a blessing for all of us here today um, because indeed our God reigns. Thank you. <laughs> we are going to sing a yes. We are going to sing a blessing. We'll follow through. It is simple. And also I know there are many people here, maybe in from Bishop Stewart University who may have gone to Gayaza or who have heard this uh, prayer. It's a blessing. So can we sing it together in um, honoring God uh, for today and for all that is going on as you go through your celebration uh, at Bishop Stewart. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord find a respect those who know how to sing. I would say that I would have failed to make a reverend because I find reverends all are good musicians. My voice cannot sing. So I don't know if I would have made a reverend. Because of shortage of time, there is one particular person whom would have, invi would have loved to invite to address you and ask to appreciate him. But join me to appreciate to appreciate our former vice chancellor who is seated with us. <laughs> Professor Biba Ngamba and his wife who is seated in the audience may, may also stand up. The wife who supported him stand up and we appreciate you too. <laughs> it's a promise of the council that we shall get a time and invite you at a function like this, and we share your experience. We appreciate you and thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I will grab this opportunity to thank 
basically to thank, to express my honor and pride for having officiated at the function, honoring the great person, the great Professor Rukari. When I was at Makiri 50 years, 50 years ago, we are proud of three people. We as from the West. There was Professor Rukari, whom we are honoring. There was Uncle George Chuguru, who was our Dean of Students. And there was Uncle Godon Kahanji, who was my house, my whole, uh, you call them what? Whole warden, yes. Those three made us proud to be coming from the West at Makerere. Professor Rukari was what you would call a mutembuzi, kutembura. Many of us were born when forests have been cleared. But the role of a man of strong spirit and energy was to clear the forest so that women may cultivate. I don't know if any of you has read Things Fall Apart and appreciate Okonko, how Okonko was specialist in clearing the forest so that the wives could dig. We are not wives, but we are proud to be following in the footsteps of Professor Rukari. Join me to thank his wife, Gwen, for having surrendered her husband to us from his peaceful retirement. And for her to have come despite a whole year of medical condition, making her weak. But I was impressed by her strength today. So perhaps medicine is working, is working wonders. Let's pray for quick recovery and fast recovery. We appreciate the children because as I've already mentioned, this must have been a joint effort of the generosity that we have benefited today. 50 million from a family is quite challenging. Perhaps when I retire, I will emulate when I'm retiring. Perhaps we should appreciate that his success was a success because they put God central in their decisions. That we are all here to fulfill God's purpose. But some of us, some of us fail in that, ende in that en en uh, endeavor. We thank Professor Rukari for having accepted to fulfill God's purpose. At Bishop Stewart, we believe that when our God reigns, there is no failure. And we keep that motto to continue the work of God at Bishop Stewart University. I thank the members of staff and the students for having been a very good audience today, for having been very listening and appreciating with the clapping where it was necessary. I thank you very much. And in the future, we keep that spirit. I want to believe that the MC and the Vice Chancellor have got another activity to fulfill. This is where people are going to sign, those who are invited to sign, and we shall be guiding that activity by the MC. I thank you once again. I thank Professor Okari's family. I, I thank uh, all those who have accompanied her here. Please, we shall be happy to receive you here once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kenneth Kagame. Let us appreciate him more. I'll be reading names where today we have um, a few people who will be signing the service recognition book and then they receive certificates. We have those who signed area, but they will also receive certificates. So I will be reading names and after reading a name, you will come and sign. And maybe you can introduce the people that you've come with.
May I request uh, Mrs. Yokonia Bitashoborochire and your family to come and receive the certificate of Reverend Canon Yokonia Bitashoborochire, the late. Yes, the late Reverend Canon Yokonia Bita Shoborochire was the first academic registrar and one of the first lecturers of Bishop Stewart University. You can please. I would like to take this opportunity to introduce my children who has escorted me or accompanied me for this, for this function which has taken place. The firstborn, Simon Sass Bita, is my firstborn with his wife. And another son is called Jesse Muchunguzi Bita. He's also my son. Others failed to come because of many reasons. I apologize for that. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very, very much. May I invite the family of the late Eric Chonyo, family of the late Eric Chonyo, Eric Chonyo was our neighbor and the family is still they are our neighbors and they were here with us as Bishop Stewart University started. We appreciate you so much. Thank you very much for being good neighbors and during that time for protecting the land of the university. And Scovia heads Mother's Union, Bishop Stewart University. Thank you very much. We have a family of uh, Professor James Ntozi. I've seen Dr. Aida Ntozi and the family around. Professor James Intozi was a council member and chairperson committee of the appointments and staff welfare at Bishop Stewart University. We thank God for what he was able to do and thank you very much for coming. You know, to sign in this book, it means it indeed you did a lot. Uh, 
Thank you very much. I, I wish to introduce uh, my children. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Arthur Ntozi and uh, the wife, Sandra Ntozi. And then uh, our daughter, our last born, Claire Ntozi. Claire Kobsinje Ntozi. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. May I request, uh, may I, uh, let us receive the family of the right Reverend Dr. Livingstone Mpala Nyinkoyoyo. The family is represented by daughters and uh, the family of His Grace Dr. Livingstone Mpala Nyinkoyoyo is receiving the certificate for the prayer. And during that time, when Bishop Stuart University started, he was the Vice Chancellor of Uganda Christian University, and he was the and uh, he was the Chancellor of uh, Bish of Uganda Christian University. And during that time, Bishop Stuart University was affiliated, uh, affiliated, affiliated. I'm sorry to Uganda Christian University. That. Lastly, we have uh, a certificate for Reverend Professor Stephen Knorr. He's out of the country, so he's not been able to be in this place, but uh, we really appreciate him so, so much. Reverend Judith, You see you aluminous, Reverend Judith. Yes, Professor Stephen Knorr was the Vice Chancellor Uganda Christian University. The time Bishop Stewart University was appreciate, uh, uh, affiliated to Uganda Christian University. Now we have the family. We have the family of Professor Enokarukare Galet. They are receiving a certificate, but they had signed before. Please come and receive your certificate. The family of Professor. Eric Rukare, Enoka Rukare. That is the family of Professor Enoka Rukare. Thank you very much for coming and for the scholarship. We are so grateful. May I request uh, Professor Jose Bibangamba to come over and receive your certificate. Please, Madam Jenny Bibangamba, come over. Thank you very much, Professor Joseph Vangamba. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. You can hear claps from the staff, the side of staff. So thank you very, very much. You see? Yes, I can see you are a Father's Union person. Thank you. Uh, may I request a... Uh, Mr. Wilson Tumwini, our former mayor. He was on council of Bishop Stewart University. He was a council member. 
Thank you very, very much. Uh, let me invite the family of Bishop Dr. Elisha Chamugambi to come and receive a certificate. Madam Annette and Ruth Chamugambi, please come forward. Thank you, we are through with that activity. Uh, right now we are remaining with two items. Uh, we are remaining with uh, concluding remarks from uh, uh, the Chancellor, my Lord Bishop, and uh, we will have photo moment after that, then we will have our departure. Uh, I take this honor. Is Canon Mtabazi around? Canon Simon Mtabazi. Allow me to request my Lord Bishop to give us his concluding remarks and pray for us, my Lord Bishop. Thank you very much. It would be unfair if I speak for long because we have been seated here for a very long time. And actually, I must thank uh, our guests and our students for good discipline, trying to keep here all this time, listening. Uh, really, I must appreciate you, because I'm a teacher. I know what that means. But this is good for you, because listening to people like these, where do you get a chance and an opportunity to listen to people like these who are here. I always tell people who ask me, if you were to ask what contribution, significant contribution did you ever make when you were a teacher in schools, I would only say one major thing. I would invite people of caliber to speak to my students. That is my number one. Whether preaching, or talks like this. That is number one. Because we are who we are, because of the words of wisdom we've learned from people. So, guest of honor, uh, Madam Gweni Rukare, and the protocol observed because of time. It is really a joy for us to host you here and to mark and honor uh, the late Professor Kare, who was a great educationist and who made a significant contribution to the beginning of this university, which has been ably put by the keynote speaker, uh, Professor Kamuntu and Professor Sabiti, and also some remarks here and there by Professor Kagame, but also more so from the wife of the late uh, Madam Gweni. So we now have some good fair idea. Personally also I've been helped to better understand who Professor Rukari was. And my take home, the biggest, was how 
not only was very hardworking and committed and selfless, but the heart he had for the place of church in the running of the university. He acknowledged that, and that is very important because the council or the management it is always good when they remember the foundation of the university, the vision, mission, and core objectives. The day they forget also that is uh, a disaster. I am also so much encouraged to learn that he had passion for educating and meeting the needs of the needy, including children of pastors, which I didn't know. I didn't know that Kakuba was a beneficiary of that scheme. I've just known it today. Or even that he's a son of a pastor, I didn't know. I think testimonies need to be intensified <laughs> when we give our testimonies, who we are and where we come from. So we thank God for that. I've also gotten to know that he raised the, the, the esteem, the position of the chaplain to be highly recognized in the system structure of the university, that the chaplain was number three. I don't know what, which number he is these days, but perhaps it is around there. I also have gotten to know that he was the originator of the idea of the diocesan education secretary being an ex-official on the council. And there I see that this was someone who had the church at heart and was focusing on the, the, the foundations. And, and this is very, very important to me. And I appreciate it very much. But today we've gotten something which is amazing. We invited these people to appreciate them. And we would have ordinarily uh, given them a certificate or even transport or whatever. But now here they are bringing a check of 50 million Uganda shillings. Ah, this is amazing. This is amazing. But we thank God for the Rukari family. It's a big family. There's someone I was looking out for, the Olympics guy. Eh? <laughs> that one is called who? Donald, yes. There is one of them who is on the Olympics committee or things like those. He's been into swimming and the sports page, if he misses, then you know the, that's not common. So we thank God for the Rukare family continuing the name. And also I taught one of them. Uh, I think it is Daniel. One time I traveled with him on the plane. I don't know where I was going or where I was going. Uh, but I think he's a, like a lecturer in a university or something. He's into teaching. Who is that one? Daniel, that's the one I taught. Is it the one in England? But cold, cold. But one time he was even in the US or something. Yes, okay. Yeah, that one, I remember him. Uh, so we really thank God for this family and for the great contribution uh, and for this scholarship, certainly uh, we shall go a long way in using it because education per se is very critical in the development of any nation. When I was a teacher at Intari where I was teaching the Daniels, one of the topics I would give them in a general paper was education is the best inheritance a person can give to a child. Discuss. <laughs> Education is the best inheritance a person can give to a child. Now, how more so for teachers who teach? Yesterday, I was meeting uh, all the head teachers of Church of Uganda founded schools in Ankole Diocese. And I was telling them, personally, I was a teacher. Teachers transform lives. Teachers make a future for the people before them. And I was telling them, my working verse is Proverbs 3.27. Withhold not good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to give it to them. You empty yourself to these students. You'll be amazed at how these people become in future. So when we, 
when you support education, teachers who are coming out with funding, and many of them sometimes they can't manage because their income is low. So that is very, very thoughtful. And also for manpower, uh, human resource development, if you think about education being supported, you are thinking about the right thing. Currently, we have, we've been having uh, people posted as head teachers. But you find that even the church lacks people to front because sometimes some of them have not had the opportunities to study. So I think this will go a long way in strengthening the education uh, bit of our diocese. And one thing I want to tell you, uh, by, by God's grace, our schools of Ankole Diocese, I will say it bluntly, they, are the, they have been performing the best in the whole of the Church of Uganda. Now, when you say such a statement, you need to back it up. What is the evidence? <laughs> the Provincial Education Secretary, in the recent past, actually, I think at the beginning of this year, all Provincial Education Secretaries met in Ruero, and they invited the guest of honor who was Dr. Muyingo, Minister for Higher Education. And Reverend Dr. Kakoza made a submission to the Minister of Higher Education. And he told him, Honorable Minister, we are requesting you, as Province of Church of Uganda, that the schools of Ankole Diocese have been doing so well. So other education secretaries in the province should go to Ankole and benchmark. And he requested them, him to offer a transport to them, a bus. And the minister agreed. So at some point, some of these schools, people are going to come from Kasese, from Fort Potro, from Lango, to see some of these schools, like Demo Primary, which is here, which is for this university. And I think all these are the efforts of the professor who carries, because education Department is one of the strong ones we have here at BSU. And so the teachers who have come from here have gone and taught, and now our schools are more or less the best in the province of Church of Uganda. I'm not talking about other faiths. I'm talking about Church of Uganda. So we thank God for that. I want also to appreciate other people who have been uh, commended, including uh, Archbishop Nkoyoyo, uh, the first uh, chancellor, you would say, because you see you through Professor Noll, and of course, Archbishop Nkoyoyo was able to approve that our programs become affiliated to UCU. So we really appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Ruth and Naomi, for representing uh, your mother and, and also in honor of your father for the great contribution that they were able to make. We are deeply uh, grateful, and we continue to pray that the good Lord will bless her with good health, and that all will work out well. All those who have made a contribution, we shall keep appreciating over time, because this one is now the first. But we also have that list, which you saw. Many people have been appreciated, and we shall continue doing research on the history of the university and appreciating different people. Thank you so much, uh, the Chairman Council, for the job well done, right from the founding chairperson, Professor Sabiti, up to now. Thank you very much, Professor Mauda, right from the founding Vice Chancellor to Professor Vangamba, now to Mauda. We are moving in the right direction. This university now is at a high point and it cannot go backwards. We thank God eventually we we're able to get a charter. Now the story for the charter is for another day. It was also similar to the founding actually. But we thank God that he has always been with us all through. So because of time, I may not say some things, but thank you everybody who has come. May the Lord God bless you. Let us pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for such an occasion as this, a great historical moment of honoring late Professor 
Enoch Harukare, and for the great contribution he was able to make in the founding of this university. The selflessness, as we have heard, the sensitivity to money and being careful on use of resources, the extension of the hand of friendship to those in need, like children of the clergy, through that scholarship, and even the continuation of that same spirit in this scholarship that has been uh, mentioned of 50 million towards the education fund. Lord, we thank you for such great heart from the family. Thank you that even the children and the, 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 the wife, they are also having fruits of ensuring that education continues to flow. Thank you for the great steps in the beginning. We are seeing the fruits now even through the schools in Ankole Diocese, because teachers who have gone through these schools have now impacted the whole area. And since education is the foundation of any development of any nation, we thank you that all is going well. May you continue to bless us and to guide us, and we pray for the health of Gweni. May you give her good health and strength, good recovery, good wisdom to teach to, to, to medics who are handling her, and Lord, we commit into your hands our sister here, daughter Dora, for going through a tough time, losing a loved one. But we thank you that these two have been born again, and they have been testifying about your goodness wherever they've been. And we know that our brother is also is in good hands where he is in eternity. May you continue to bless the whole family, the Rukaris, wherever they are, near and far, protect them, provide for them, guard them, so that they will continue also to be good ambassadors wherever they are. Because your word in Proverbs 22 verse 1 says, a good name is worth more than precious jewels. May they continue to have a good name. And we thank you for all those who have made a key contribution, and including those who have been honored today. May you bless them and guide them. Remember to pray. For Mama Ruth in Koyoyo, bless her, guide her, protect her. Professor Noor.
Uh, I want you to I want to remind you of evening primary plenary sessions at seven. Please come back here for mission. Tomorrow morning at nine we have a uh, honorable minister opening and closing exhibitions. Please come. Uh, the minister will be here in the morning at nine. I invite you staff. I invite you friends and students. I invite you uh, guests to come again tomorrow to receive the Honorable Minister, Honorable Monica Mutsenero. And um, that is tomorrow. And we'll have community hour as well. On Saturday, we have alumni, alumni versus UPC. West. So all the alumni, I invite you to come and all of us to support them. And then on Sunday, we will be concluding with a service. And then in the afternoon at three, we have visits tournament. Thank you very much once again. I will. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a boardroom here for our visitors. So that's where we're going to have our lunch room. So all the visitors in this state, after the, 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 the taking photos, we shall just go here for lunch. And our staff, we shall be in the main hall. That's where our lunch is. Uh, Madam Jenny, you are not supposed to be there because the professor is here. So you, you really better join him and have a better order. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will request um, Madam Madam Gwenny Rupari with your team, the bishop, council members, top management. We have photo booth where we are going to take uh, photos from. After taking photos, you proceed to the board from. Members, I'll be requesting teams who are around. I'll be inviting a group by group to join. So right now I'm inviting the team, that the group, the family, Mrs. Gwen Lukari and family, please go to the photo booth and we have photo moments. Members of staff, uh, they are requesting that you be here as they come to invite people. Actually, they are still preparing, so don't don't rush there right now. <laughs>